Good morning, you guys. What is going on? So this morning, I do just want to talk about my experience in the National Guard. I want to talk about how that has probably been one of the best decisions of my life. And if you are someone who is 17, 18, or maybe you're someone in your 20s and you want a good piece of advice, maybe you're thinking about joining the National Guard or the service in general, take this with a grain of salt because this here is my experience and your experience won't be the same. However, I do want to talk about how joining this service was one of the best decisions of my life. So I joined when I was 17 years old. I did have to have my parents sign the waiver form. I knew that I always wanted to join the service in some way. Um, when I was younger, I wanted to do that hoorah crap. So I wanted to be a ranger. I wanted to go jump out of helicopters. I wanted to go overseas, deploy. I wanted to be the baddest guy out there. And I mean, I feel like this is everybody's dream when they want to join the service. They're 17 years old. They think that they're tougher than nails, which you have to be if you want to be one of those guys. I didn't know what service I wanted to be. Um, I think I finally decided on army and then I was in a relationship and I kind of put that first and kind of listened to my family a little bit more and my goals changed. I thought, okay, well, if I don't do this forever, what can I do afterwards? And that's when I finally decided that the Army National Guard was the best decision for me. Now, why was it the best decision? This is because they were going to pay 100% tuition to most of the colleges that I was looking at. And I would say today, people come out of college with easily fifty to $100,000 in debt, which is insane. That's almost a thousand dollars a month in just payments and a lot of people go to school for something very very stupid um, like a social arts degree what the heck are you gonna do with that and I knew that I wanted a great ROI I believe that if you are willing to make the sacrifice you should definitely join the guard I believe I like I like Israel's policy where they have everyone join their army for two years I think that we should do something similar I think it would put a much more perspective on things for a lot of people and it would also help kind of shape our country a little bit better because I feel like everyone's kind of they, they just don't care <laughs> there's no authority at all for many people and I believe going into the service you realize that there was authority there were ranks that you had to listen to someone above you and I feel like we don't have a lot of that in this country everyone just thinks that they can do whatever they want try and do that in the army and it's not gonna work anyway like I was saying I wanted to go to college and I didn't want to go in debt but I also wanted to join the service but I didn't want to be away from my family my girlfriend at the time um, who is now my wife and I just I was in between so the Army National Guard was the best decision for me and for everyone else around me still got to do the army stuff Still got to do all that cool stuff. If I really wanted to, I still had the opportunity to go to Ranger School. I, uh, you can still be in the National Guard and be in a Special Forces um, platoon or not platoon company, and you can still do all that stuff as being a member of the National Guard. So at the National Guard, what I did was I did two weeks out of the summer was mandatory. Um, sometimes it was up to a month, and then. I had to go every, once a month, I had to go um, take a weekend out of the month and go to uh, my company, which was only like 45 minutes away. I could sleep there, I could come back home at the end of the night if I wanted to and then drive back in the morning. Sometimes I did have to sleep there depending on the mission that we were doing. And honestly, I think I got the best of both worlds when I joined the Army National Guard because like I said, I was able to work full time, go to school, still have the army stuff, still reap all the benefits, and still play army per se. Like it was, it was awesome. And I did six years. Uh, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I loved when I joined the service. I met a lot of great people. I had a great, a lot of great experiences. I learned a whole lot of different things, and most of all, I got all the benefits uh, from being in the military. Being in the military has 
changed my life. It's been one of the best decisions of my life. And honestly, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Whenever someone says a thing about going to school, I always, always recommend, have you looked in the Army National Guard? I always recommend it. Because, like I was saying, it just puts a good perspective on you, a good head on your shoulders, and you get to go to school for free. So what's better than that? I believe right now that we live in a very entitled world. Everyone wants the government to pay for their school or whatever. And they're not willing to sacrifice or work for it. And I feel like this is one thing that kind of pisses me off. Is like, I sacrificed six years to get free college. I spent time away from my family. I put in the work, essentially. And I earned the free college. However, you just want it for free for doing nothing, which is just that entitlement, millennial, not even millennial, Gen Z or X, whatever the heck we're on now, that mindset, which is just crazy. The world, the world is crazy right now. And then I would say after my six years, I almost signed up for another six years. As you can see, I'm wearing scrubs. I almost went to PA school or physician assistant or physician associate school. I was like this close and it was coming up to the end of my six years and they would have paid for that as well. So I would have joined, um, I would have went, I had two options actually. So I could have either went to Texas and went through the Army's physician assistant school, which is known as IPAP. I thought about doing that and I really looked into it. However, it's easier to get into a civilian PA school than it is the Army PA school because the Army PA school only takes like 50 applicants a year out of the entire Army and Pennsylvania only sends one person a year. So I was going up against four or five other guys and some of these guys were smarter than me, some of them were higher rank than me, and I thought, yeah, I, I really only want to do this once, because you can only apply once a year. And that's why I was thinking about a civilian school more so than a uh, army school. But ultimately, it came down to, I didn't want to go to PA school anymore. I went to travel as a respiratory therapist, made a bunch of money. Um, that's for a whole different story. But I decided not to join or re-enlist because of that there. If I would have re-enlisted, they would have paid me $25,000 up to each year, up to six years or four years, one or the other, which would have covered my cost of tuition um, and board and all that good stuff. So I was set. And I know a lot of people, once they go to school, they realize, holy crap. I have a lot of debt under my name. So therefore they join the army, which is probably the smartest thing that you can do. I know that uh, I had a buddy and he joined the army after going to Penn State and Penn State, Maine is a pretty, that's a state school, well, that's not even a state school, that's like the school in Pennsylvania. That is a big school and it's very, very pricey. And I think uh, when he joined the army, they paid 40,000 for four or six years, something like that, which is crazy amount of money um, to get that debt taken off your name. So therefore, if you're someone that is looking to get that debt removed, go ahead and get it off. Uh, some other great benefits with being in the Army National Guard is I've worked with a lot of guys who worked at uh, an Army base near me or a National Guard base, and this was their full-time job. So it's known as uh, they were called techs and they got paid paid pretty well so they were mechanics they worked monday through friday a typical eight hour shift uh they had every other monday off every holiday was paid like it was a good shift and they got paid well and honestly that was a gig to definitely get into but what i always told myself is people who stay in the army national guard stay in it because they need the Army National Guard and this is because they have a job like that. Or another great thing that the National Guard has is something known as Active Guard and what this is is basically you work at your little company um, 
or maybe you work at the army base, whatever the case may be. You're not a tech, but you're in the army. It's hard to explain the difference if you've never been, if you've never seen the two, it's really hard to tell the difference between the two. But with the uh, Army National Guard, if you are in the active, active guard, you're more, I don't know, I don't wanna say in the military than a tech, but a tech would be more like, almost like contract work in a way. I don't wanna say it's contract work because you are a full-time employee and they do have contracts where you can be a tech, but things get a little messy. Anyway, being in the active guard, you have a whole lot more benefits compared to being a tech. You are somebody who works in the army um, rather than through the army, if that, if that makes sense. Like I said, I do apologize if that really confused you. Um, throughout my six years in the Army National Guard, I shot a lot of big guns. I did a lot of uh, camping trips. <laughs> so we'd go out and stay in the field for a month at a time. We'd do a bunch of crazy stuff. Now, I never did go overseas or anything. And I would say that's one benefit for or pro for me is I have to spend more time away from my family. I have been with people who were away for the whole first year of some of their kids' lives. And honestly, I just, having a one-year-old right now, I couldn't even imagine that. Uh, but yeah, so right as I was getting out, the uh, company that I was with, they were actually going over to Egypt. A lot of my buddies, a lot of my friends, they went over to Egypt and they said it was honestly like a vacation. And they, they loved it. Uh, when I was getting out, they did also offer me a bunch of sign-on bonuses. So one of them was 20,000 for six years. Now after the 20 grand got taxed, it would have been like 14, which is still a good bit of money. However, I was really looking at the pros and cons. Did not want to go overseas. I did not want to spend another six years in the army <clears throat> because there is a lot of bull crap you put up with in, in the army. If you uh, join the army, I'm sure you know, you are the government's piece of property. You do what they say when they say, and if you don't do it, they can call the cops and you can become arrested. Um, so you have to listen. Now, did I have a lot of bozos that I served with? Yes. Um, these were the guys that would always show up late. Um, they would have to have the cops go to some of these people's houses and kind of escort them to the base and say, hey, where you at? But these were just far and far and in between. Uh, I would say that a lot of the guys I did serve with were awesome. They were great. Like I said, I built a lot of good relationships and we had a lot of fun times. The army has its own culture. Like there are things that you would do in the army that you could not do in your normal job or anything like that. So to give you an example, I would be, I was a supply specialist in the army. So I took care of all the supply stuff, all the weapons, all that good stuff. And someone came to me and they're like, hey Austin, can I get another, uh, I don't know, uniform or something like I lost mine blah 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 I'd say no get get the hell out of my face you <laughs> I don't even know <laughs> or, uh, I'd, I'd be like I generally I'd say yes I was a pretty nice dude uh, but like if I wanted to say that John you're the ugliest motherfucker I ever met <laughs> I could say that to his face and I don't know I would I would feel wrong if I said that to somebody in the uh, in the hospital. But like I would say stuff like that all the time to people. We just kind of get under their nerves, mess with them, and you mean that wasn't anything that was looked at as weird. I mean it is a new army, and things may have changed a little bit. But like I would call people stupid all the time, especially like if they uh, did something stupid. Like I'd be like, you're a freaking idiot. Um, now I was very nice and I did not talk to people like this all the time unless they deserved it. Funny story, when I was in basic training, we actually had a drill instructor. He told the, uh, the private to walk around with a plant because, uh, the private was wasting oxygen. <laughs> uh, 
basic training, there's a lot of funny stories. And honestly, I love basic training. Basic training was like a advanced summer camp. You are away from home, and there are a lot of rules, but it's nothing that nobody can handle. Does it suck at times? Of course it does. It's basic training. But it's nothing terrible, like I said. Uh, it is basically go, go, go all day, and then some days you are even up at night. But I did a lot of cool stuff at basic training, and I wouldn't say I want to do it again, but if I had to, I would. Uh, when I initially left for basic training, I was right after my senior year. I had a couple weeks to do whatever I want, and then straight to Fort Jackson, South Carolina. It was definitely an experience and an eye-opener because you go into this brand new place all by yourself. It was the first time I ever flown in an airplane by myself. I think it was the first time I ever flew <laughs> at all. I got on the plane by myself. I remember driving to the airport. I was sick to my stomach. Like I was excited to go, but it's nerve wracking to know that you're gonna leave your family, you're going to some random place, and you're gonna yell that, you're gonna get trained, you're going to basic training. And it's just the whole whole experience. Anyway, I got the fourth Fort Jackson and they really drill into you right away and let you know that they are the authority, they're the boss, and you're a piece of crap. And then throughout basic training they kind of build you up, build that relationship with you, and they really help you become a soldier and learn everything that you need to learn. And then after basic training, I went to something known as AIT, which is Advanced Individual Training. And this is different for everyone. Um, you're gonna go to some places based on your MOS or your job. So I went to Fort Lee, Virginia, and this is a bigger base. It was close to home, and I really enjoyed it there. Uh, I was there for another eight weeks or so and just kind of did my supply training uh, job and learned all the tech and softwares, learned all the weapon systems and just kind of got to know everything about my job and what I'd be doing in the Army. If you join to become a mechanic in the Army, this is exactly what you do. You go to mechanic school, you learn how to become a mechanic, uh, you become a cook in the Army. They teach you how to become a cook, how to do certain things, how everything works as a cook. Whatever your job is in the Army, they're going to teach you. And how you determine your job is by a test known as the ASVAB. So this is a test that you got to take in order to get into any military branch. So I took this to get into the Army. I saw my scores, and I realized that these were the jobs that I could take. I sat down my recruiter. He said, okay, here's the jobs that are available. And he listed them all out. And my, my stepdad was in the Army, so like we kind of talked. and. Like I kind of did a little bit of research, not a whole lot. I was mainly just talking to people. And somehow I ended up on a supply specialist um, list and that's what I decided to be. Now, do I regret becoming a supply specialist and not going infantry and stuff like I wanted to? Not really, um, because I st would say that I still got a lot of that experience. However, it wasn't like we did that every single weekend. So if you're infantry or you're in the CAV, that's exactly what you're doing every weekend, training to fight, training to fight, going out in the field. And I would say that with my job, I was sitting in an office, which was great, AC. Um, and a lot of times, if I wanted to study for school, I would study for school. So you always have a supply sergeant, and they're the ones that's mainly in charge. And I was a supply specialist, so I just kind of helped out. And then if I uh, wanted to become the supply sergeant, I would have to be AGR or that active National Guard. And then I would also have to become sergeant, obviously. So I got to the rank of specialist, which is an E4. And then after that, you have to go to BLS or, yeah, I think it's BLS, basic leadership course or BLC. Um, same BLS because I've got the scrubs on. Anyway, you have to go to your basic leadership course after you completed that, you were eligible for sergeant as long as you met the numbers and all that good stuff. But for my personal self, I could not reach sergeant as a supply sergeant because that's an AGR position. They are doing that day in and day out. Uh, I would have to reclass 
change my job, leave my family again, go back to school. And this is when I considered about PA and I figured, oh, that would be my job. But I didn't want to do that because of what I said before, the cons kind of outweighed the pros. I got all my benefits, my school was paid for and everything was great. If I wanted the more benefits from the army besides not going to PA school and like just staying in as a supply specialist, I would have had to reclass, like I said, leave, change my jobs, which I probably would have become a medic. Uh, and then I would have had to, oh, benefits, but that's what I was talking about. The health insurance and everything else was great, but there was no real benefits that I could have gotten that I didn't already get. Um, also, being in the Army National Guard, the retirement thing is a little bit different compared to active guard. It's almost more like a 401k or a Roth IRA now. It's not like that pension type thing that you always hear about. Like the older guys like, oh yeah, I still get 2,500 a month or 5,000 a month or whatever. Yeah, not, not really. It's your, like a 401k, like I was saying, it's whatever you put into it. And I was like, yeah, I, I could pick up these extra hours, get this amount of money and just put it in my own Roth IRA. Uh, but back in the day, the retirement system was super good. I know a guy who retired active army guard, so his, the army was his job. And then he retired, he got disability. What the heck? And then this dude was making uh, almost 5,000 a month when he retired. Like, he was living pretty good. Um, and then he retired at, I wanna say 51 or 50. And he got another job making $100,000 a year. And he was just loving life. Now, did he put in the hours? Did he sacrifice his time and his life for the Army? Yes, he did. Like I said, there's a lot of bull crap with the Army. You gotta sacrifice a lot. However, it can definitely be worth it, but it can also put a huge strain on your, your life. Uh, look at the divorce rates for people who are in the military compared to like the average civilians. It's crazy high. Uh, the Army is great and everything, and I would strongly suggest it for anyone that is young, looking to go to college, maybe you need the benefits, but for a long-term thing, if you're not planning on making the Army a career, I wouldn't go in for the four to six years. I would get in, get all your benefits, reap them, and then leave. You need to use the government because I promise you the government will use you. Now, will you have fun being in the Army? Of course you will. You're going to love it and hate it at the same time. It's a love-hate relationship. But honestly, I would do it all over again. Like I said, I had a great time. Oh, I hate coming right here. So I'm at a red light and there's like a bunch of homeless people. And they just like stare at you. And of course, they all pull the, uh, the veteran card. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. Anyway, so going back to the whole recap of the video, get your benefits, go to school. If you want to do the Army Active Guard or become a tech or work at your... I don't want to say you're local, but an army base near you or any of these smaller companies, 100% worth it. Uh, the army has a lot to offer, but it can also take a lot as well. Uh, I would do it all over again. Like I said, if you guys have any questions at all, please let me know. Please put in the comments, and I'll try and answer it to the best of my ability. Ending this, I just want to say that your recruiter will lie to you. <laughs> they may make it sound like it's the best thing in the world. They may tell you that you're going to get this, this, this. You're going to get 25000 just from joining. You're going to go to ranger school. You're going to do all this stuff. And they're probably lying to you just to get you to sign that paper so they can keep their quotas up. But you need to make sure you have everything in your contract. If you don't have it in your contract, don't sign the paper until it's in your contract. If you guys have any questions, like I said, please answer it. I was just kind of rambling on this video here. Uh, didn't really have any expectations. Just gonna talk about myself and my experience 
and whatever I was thinking. Anyway, I hope you guys have an awesome day. I want to also invite you over to our Facebook group. The link to that is in the description below. So in this Facebook group, we talk about fitness as well as how to grow on social media. It's all for top fitness and we just talk about everything about how to be the 1%. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, like I said, put in the comments. See you in the next one.